Good morning, you guys. We are still in June gloom weather. Today's June 13th, 2024. And we've been in a couple months now of the skies being very gray, overcast. This is the time of year in San Diego, the only time of year that it's not sunny constantly. And at first I kind of like it, but it does make me want to sleep in. It does feel a little bit gloomy. But, uh, but fortunately, unlike the rest of the country, we are not having a heat wave at all. There's a cool breeze blowing in through my window. I get the ocean breeze blowing in. I'm not that far from the coast. I'm a little bit uphill. So the breeze blows in through my window and it's not really hot. So that's nice, but it has been gloomy. Uh, it's the marine layer. They call it June gloom. And it's probably going to go on for a couple more weeks and then it's going to be really muggy. Uh, a lot of homes in San Diego do not have air conditioning because you don't really need it except July and August. But I would be lost without it because it's muggy. Uh, so that's a long introduction. Uh, so that's why I'm wearing my tennis dress and this final shirt. I'm just like cozied up this morning. <laughs> Uh, early this morning and uh, trying to get myself motivated to go to the gym. Okay, so I came across some videos from Dr. Helen Fisher. Uh, she studies love. She is uh, in her late 70s now, a beautiful woman, and she just got married for the first time two years ago, believe it or not. Uh, she's never wanted children. Uh, she's an anthropologist has never wanted children and has had uh, apparently relationships throughout her life. And she became really well known only in her 50s when she published The Anatomy of Love. She makes most of her income now, I guess, from speaking engagements. And she lives in New York in a separate home from her husband, who lives in the Bronx and she lives in Manhattan. Very interesting. So I'm going to uh, put the link to the video in the description. Um, the part that I'm going to um, play for you now is around the 16 minute mark. And she describes what she found um, taking brain scans of couples who are in love and long term relationships. And it has to do with what I've talked about before that in order to be happily married for a long period of time, you cannot be with someone who has mental health issues or addictions. Uh, you, you've got to be with someone that you get along with and who's easygoing. Uh, so let's hear what she has to say and I'll come back on the other side. This is what happens in the brain in a long-term, happy, in romantic partnership. We found activity not only in the brain circuits for romantic love, but in three others linked with happiness. A brain region linked with um, empathy, a brain region linked with controlling your own stress and your own emotions, and a brain region linked with overlooking the negative, just what you were able to do for a month. Um, uh, it's called positive illusions, the ability to overlook what you don't like about somebody. But what are the bad doing. stuff? Because Well, if it's too bad, you got to go. <laughs> you know, I mean, if it's minor, Overlook no, it. No, I I know, but you said all the only the positive things that happen uh, on, yeah. when you are in love. So I guess there is always some bad things as well. Sure. That are happening. Did you detect any bad things that are happening? Um. Uh. Everybody's going to have different bad things. Now, when I, you know, before I put these people in the brain scanner, we've done three basic experiments. One is of young people like you, and we put um seventeen of them. They'd just fallen madly in love. The second study, and the most important one for me, is people who have just been dumped, just been rejected in love, because that's when you're dangerous to yourself and to others and, you know, obsessed and out of control, et cetera. And the third was, um, um, so happily and madly in love, just fallen in love, rejected in love. And the third basic brain um, study was of these people who were in long-term um, uh, relationships. And um, what was your question? I forgot. What are the bad things oh, yeah. about, so, uh, about being in love? You said all oh, the yeah. positive things. Um, we asked people before I put them in the machine, what, what don't you like about him or her? 
And they were absolutely ridiculous. The only one I can really remember right now is that um, one girl said, uh, oh, yeah, he'd roll over in bed and take all the um, all the blankets with him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, with me, I can't get my husband to turn the lights out. I can't get him to turn the lights out. But you know what? As I go around and I turn the lights out, I think, oh, he's so hilarious. He's so charming. He's so handsome. He's so competent. He's so good at what he does. He's so sexy. I can turn the goddamn lights out. <laughs> Isn't that fascinating? So she found in the brain scans of the, of the couples in long-term relationships, I think that was 20 plus years, who were happily married, that the brain regions that were active, I'm going to say that that shows that they have empathy, that they regulate their own stress and their own emotions, and that they can overlook the negative things. They're not all jittery and getting upset. They have positive illusions. They focus on the positive. Uh, and again, like the interviewer asked, what about people who are really bad? No, you don't want to be with bad people. You want to be with good people. But this has to do with the kind of person that you are. So if you have two people that find each other attractive, they have empathy, they want to manage their own emotions and stress and they focus on the positive in their partner, you have a really good chance for a long-term relationship that's satisfying, apparently. She also mentioned in another part of the video that what they found in couples newly in love, as the interviewer alluded to, the first month that he is in a relation was in his last relationship, everything was beautiful, everything was blissful, and then things start falling apart. And she said it's because when you, the there's a part in your brain that categorizes and notices negative things. That part is shut down when you first meet someone. So when you first fall in love, the part of the part of your brain that notices the negative things is shut down and muted. Um, but then eventually that is, you know, activated and you start getting annoyed at the other person. So very interesting. Uh, so it just means like, don't listen to me being so negative about relationships because there are people actually who are happily married. And she said that 76% of the long-term couples she studies, studied, um, are happy in their relationships, which surprised me. I thought the number would be much lower than that. Where well, I do disagree with her, um, she does say that, openly say that she's the chief scientific advisor for Match.com and has been for, I believe, 17 years. She's very pro dating apps. And um, I think she's a little bit biased because everyone that I talk to and I talk to people daily, um, most people are very disappointed in the dating apps because they're what they're finding is the people that they are matching up with don't even want to meet up. And that's not even counting all the fake profiles. And to me as a woman, the men on there that I would... The majority of men on there are men that I would never even want to consider. They're not that great. Um, what more people are really talking about now is that it's better to meet people in real life. People are looking for where can I go in real life to meet people in some kind of a social space like... Um, yeah, social spaces is where... It's really more where people want to go. Um, thanks for watching my video. Hope you guys are having a good day.